Hey guys, this is SF and finally another edition of Monster Strike Podcast. Sorry, it's been about three weeks since the last one. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. One was one was there wasn't that much to talk about uh, in terms of before Murasame came. I could have talked about Murasame, but JP didn't really have anything crazy going on, even though there was a new Hatcher batch then. And then before, and then the last few weeks I have been busy. There have been a lot of stuff that's happening to me. And of course, I'm going to talk some of them. A lot of them are Monster Strike related. And yeah, so basically one big change for me was, of course, I'm part of Strike Shot. The website, what it is, if you guys haven't known, know what it is, is a website that shows guides and monster information and Monster Strike tips and all that stuff. It is one of the only english sites that's out there for you guys to check out uh dungeon walkthroughs and monster strike uh, monster analysis monster strike tips and all that stuff and they have like chat chats where you can get into games or host games and stuff like that so it's, it's a really really cool site and they came up to me and asked if i wanted to join and i said yes and that's how i kind of uh that's why i've been kind of busy trying to go uh, edit stuff and then adding some new stuff and a lot of other stuff really but that's one of the main reasons why i have been busy of course other things i've been actually playing monster strike uh monster strike does take a lot of my time so i wouldn't i wasn't being able to actually do a lot of videos and do some like do podcasts and do editing and stuff and can't really think of cool stuff to talk about as well and past weekend was striker uh street fighter Street Fighter collaboration, so I've been farming the hell out of that. I've been farming Saget and all that stuff. So sorry for people that have been waiting for a new podcast. I'll try to do it weekly, but uh, no promises. Just because I am busy, I do have uh, real life stuff to do as well, and I do have Monster Strike stuff to do because I do want to be good at the game as well. I just don't want to just like play a dungeon and then do a video and then move on to the next and then wait for the next one. I kind of want to actually like build up my characters, uh, prepare for like future content. And once I get a new monster, I want to like max hyper max them and all that stuff. So it does take time. It takes a lot of my time out of making videos and podcasts and all the other stuff. But hopefully, uh, hopefully I can balance it out as my monster strike time and then my monster strike uh, analysis, write ups and all that stuff time. So hopefully uh, of course, you'll. Uh, I'll be editing all the stuff in Strike Shot, so I'll be adding some dungeon walkthroughs that haven't been made yet. There are a lot that haven't been made, especially the new ones. Of course, I'll be adding or editing information from the older monsters that are incorrect or are just missing in general. Of course, I do need help on those because I don't have all the information, especially translated translated out in English. I can always like put in the Japanese uh, content there. Like Japanese like wordings and stuff but it's not in English so it isn't English it's for English speakers so I can try to I'll at least show at least like edit so that you know what kind of strike shot or like what the abilities are but for the actual names or the names of the strike shots themselves or the uh, names of the monsters themselves uh, I might need some people to help so if you guys have those monsters screenshot their information and then comment it onto their uh, page and I'll get to it very very soon and edit it up and once I'm finished that it might take a lot uh, it might take a while like maybe a month or two I'll start moving on to Japanese content I hope hopefully we'll have like a thing says like only Japanese con uh, only Japanese monsters or monsters are in in the JP version only and hopefully we can expand that way so that English speakers know what dungeon walkthroughs or like stuff that you should bring or same thing as what you get in the NA version but for English speakers on the JP because a lot of people uh, go to Japanese sites and then just Google Translate uh, that's why they do have a, they don't really have a hard time actually understanding the dungeon but I think it's a lot neater or more cleaner to have one site that does everything for them and having like the Japanese content onto Strike Shot will benefit of course you guys a lot more just so that you have one one site to get all your monster strike information but that's pretty much it for why i'm i'm busy and 
last weekend I was of course farming Street Fighter and then a few days before that I've been editing for the new series called Kindred Kingdoms, Liu Bei, Guan, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, three very very good monsters in my opinion. Uh, Liu Bei is the prize of the Hatcher but Zhang Fei and Guan Yu are not that bad either. Guan Yu is a little bit unappreciated just because he's not a DPS source, he's not a really good power monster. But as a support monster or uh, just somebody to fill, he's one of the better monsters out there. And Zhang Fei, just, uh, just because there's not many mon uh, Minesweeper and No War monsters, plus like those two No Abilities together, well, there's only like Kali and Low Lady that's out there right now in JP. And then after, there's going to be Skiomi and Minesh but uh, you always need more than one, more than one of those monsters in, in some of those dungeons, especially for like Alien Grey or Grey Alien where you have mines and warps at the same time and you want to have a monster that that, that knows both those abilities and same thing does work on that dungeon as well as Kali and Low Lady but if you don't have those two monsters then same is a very, very good monster of course Skiomi is going to be next month uh, from what they say and Skiomi is going to be next month so uh, so hopefully you guys can get that and then you have another no warp minesweeper monster but in terms of the dungeons themselves, I think uh, Zhang Jiao is a lot harder than Don Zhao just because for Don Zhao, uh, there is a lot of a lot of monsters that you can bring into that dungeon. Just grab any no damage from a monster and you can basically clear it as long as you do work, as long as you know what uh, what the dungeon brings and avoiding the EX laser from him that does like crazy tons of damage. I've been it with like. Uh, no, no, Arthur, Susano, which are like basically the pretty much the low tier monsters, even though they they're like relatively low tier or like not very strong or very sought out for. Uh, Don's out is still doable, just just that you gotta avoid everything, which does require some mechanics, but it's not that crazy hard for No, No and Arthur. You just one way lasers, uh, stall from one way laser, and then that should be pretty pretty easy. And Susano is just uh, pretty fast in general and just to bump into uh, Nono and Arthur. But um uh, is not that hard. Zeng Jiao is a lot harder in my opinion just because of course there's no my Super No War monsters out there. Except for Zhang Fei, you don't want to bring Low Lady and, and Kali just because they're water monsters and Zhang Jiao is a wood monster. And the only monster that knows both of those other monsters that knows both of those uh, gimmicks are Emerald Dragon, the Ascended version, but he doesn't really know the Minesweeper, he just flies past the mines and stuff. So it's not that good, but as a bump uh, bump, uh, bump combo for the Blast Bump, it's really, really useful. But uh, some of you guys seen my walkthrough videos and looks like I had a harder time with Donzao. It's just because Zen Xiao, I use like full force, like full OP champions. Uh, OP, not OP champions, like OP monsters for that dungeon, so Kushinada, Izamis, and all that stuff, so that's why it was, a, it looks a little bit easier, but uh, once I go down the tier of those viable monsters, it might get hot, harder, like Hydra and even Sakamoto Ryoma will be uh, relatively hard, but Zenjiao is just a hard dungeon because of the ability lock, that does about like what, 5-6k per, per monster, and if you stack, uh, it will double the damage on both those monsters and if you stack all four then it's like quadruple and it gets really really crazy It can one shot you and of course the last stage if you go onto that conveyor belt uh, That the speedo conveyor belt on top of her head uh, You'll be in line with her cross laser which does like 8,000 per hit which is like crazy uh, a lot of damage so that's why on that last bar I kind of avoided that conveyor belt and just use Kushinana strike shot and then and finish off with all the other stuff, which is uh, that which pretty much finish that dungeon. And Donzao is just like just move around, use bump combos, and and then bump Donzao and then avoid the cross laser, which wasn't that bad, although he is relatively hard. But at uh, Donzao, I didn't use the OP ones like the like Mika or Deneb, which are Fiend Slayers and no damage wall monsters. But even so, you don't need OP monsters for that dungeon. Uh, you might need some in uh, Zengiao. But uh, relatively okay, as I would rather you guys raise up Zhang Jiao instead of Don Zhao. Like I say in my commentary video, Don Zhao's not very useful. I haven't really used him at all, even though I ascended him. 
I don't think I used them once in Extreme Dungeon. I think I used it once just to see how the bump combo looks like. The flame bump combo. But outside of that, uh, I didn't really use them. Zhang Jiao, I didn't really use either. That's because I do have a money stand for a no world monster. I'll probably bring it, uh, take it out on JP if I want to. Maybe in NA, I'll raise uh, Zhang Jiao and then run Kushinada with her. And then just, although most likely I'll be like Zhang Jiao, Izanami, 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 or something like that. So it might not be that fun. Uh, because it's kind of like carrying Zenji out into Kushinada, so I'm not really sure about that. But in terms of my Hatcher rolls, I didn't roll that much in, in the Hatcher. I only rolled like once or twice and I didn't get any monsters from it. So, although I really liked, uh, like a Liu Bei, but JP, I have Zeng Fei and Guan Yu already, so I don't really want to go for Liu Bei just because it is hard to get him. He is a uh, 5-star and it's really hard to get 5-star monsters in this game. And I can always show off as Zheng Fei uh, and Guan Yu in JP. I think I already did a lot of them. Uh, Zheng Fei is really good for uh, Daigokuten. And then Guan Yu is really good for Ashura. Did I use Guan Yu and Ashura yet? I'm not really sure. I might use him as a friend, but I doubt it. And then Zheng Fei, I didn't use him in Daigokuten either. But I'll probably do it very soon once they come back. I do want a second uh, Daigokuten for uh, farming reasons. Because his bump cone was really, really good. But that's pretty much for Kingdrick Kingdom. And then I'll guess I'll go past uh, this week and then go to like past two weeks for Murasame. Murasame, uh, thank you for everybody that farmed with me in Dark Mur Murasame. Uh, we did get a light drop and then we did clear it afterwards. Uh, after the stream, I did help a friend, uh, help one of the people that I got the light ticket with. And we beat it. We got four drops. That was really, really good. Uh, four drops with one max out, which was me. I kind of went on my main, but um, yeah, it was with my alt. It was with my alt account, so I won it for my main, but not bad. Uh, in terms of my overall farm, I got... How many did I got? I got 2, 1, 1, 3. That's 7, and then 1 from the stream, and then another 1 afterwards, I think. So about 9. So about 9 like tickets. In terms of all the sessions, I did run full for all the sessions. I got nine vultures and I got like double digit of everything else. So in terms of that, I guess it was okay. I think I got a little bit more lucky than most people. But I did run with like three, at least three max luck monsters. And depending on how many max luck monsters you guys did, uh, you guys ran with. I think if you guys ran with all four, with four max luck and... 4 max luck and then like run the full as uh, full like I don't know like 6 sessions 7 sessions you can probably max luck uh, like Blade Murasame if all your friends shared like for me I didn't run all of them with like uh, all 4 four max luck with the like vulture so I do have some of my friends in my group that still have them I don't know if they use them yet I'm not really sure I don't really care I didn't really like Hunt them down, like say, like, yo, Ari, I got you the like Murasame ticket, uh, share it with me or something like that. I didn't do it that way. I didn't do it that. I I didn't really feel like it. Uh, they are busy. They do have uh, stuff to do as well. So I didn't bother with it. Maybe when they're free later, free, maybe they'll do it. But it's not really that important to me. I do, I am trying to max luck, but. From the looks of it, I need the next time she comes back to max luck anyway, so I guess I'll just run full for the next time, which will probably be like, I don't know, like three months. I guess three months, because in JP, she was out five times in the past eight months. Around, I don't know, like four or five times in the past eight months. So maybe two, three months in between, and then she'll be back. Uh, right now, my Murasame count is at 57, I think. 57 so about 42 left so if I get good enough drops on the next set uh, on the next on the next Murasame when she comes back then I'll probably f max luck it finish max lucking just I have two searchers and stuff like that people have been asking me a hey, searcher worth it uh, he does require a lot of, a lot of pluses like 100 I think it's 110 speed and then HP is like 43,900 and then Attack is around like 6,000. I think 6,000 plus or something like that. Is it worth it? I think 
for Sergio, I think it's worth it's worth hypermaxing him. Uh, hypermaxing him, I think he's really good. He makes your he makes your team really really stable. I suggest you hypermax him. Of course, uh, you do have a lot of time now, so you can just wait until there's a mega fusathon, and then just plus transfer, uh, grab a few searchers, and then plus transfer and stuff like that. Uh, he won't you won't be really using him outside of Mirage Summit either way, so you can take your time. You do have like a few months. If you're trying to max luck for the max luck, uh it really depends, in my opinion, like for light murasame. Unless you want to max luck light murasame, I wouldn't suggest you to max luck it. Uh as long as you have like a Queen Butterfly max luck. Uh just to farm the Dark Murasame, you don't really need a uh, Max Luck Surtur for Dark Murasame. Uh, but you do need a Surtur for the actual dungeon for Light Blade Murasame in terms of the dungeon. If you don't care about Max Luck and you just want a Murasame, Light Murasame, then just Hyper Max. Hyper Max your Surtur for the Light Blade. And then use a Max Luck monster for Dark. Basically, that's basically it. In terms of ideal dungeons, uh, ideal teams, uh, two Izamis and two Surturs will be more than enough. For like Murasami, as long as you know what uh, what happens in that dungeon, to me it's like the Light Blade Murasami ticket is all about. It's basically like Izanami, where Surtur is the Napoleon and Izanami is the Margaret. Of course, you can do like a Sirius with that kind of looks like that kind of like where you if you want to compare kind of like compare it to Oruga or something like that. But uh, Margaret Napoleon is basically the OPs of Izanami right now, so kind of I kind of make that conclusion. And if you know what the dungeon brings, then you know what the gimmicks are, then and what and what attack patterns and what you have to do beforehand and stuff like that, positioning wise, then it's pretty easy. Uh, running with two Margaret's and two Napoleons is basically a uh, one hundred percent sure win if you know how the dungeon works in Izanami. So basically, two Izanamis and two. Uh, two suitors in Murasami. If you know what what goes on, then you're pretty much 100% win on that as well. So I think it's I think it's a fine dungeon. But once you get to Muramasa, Muramasa uh gets really really hard just because there's a random factor in that dungeon. Uh, you can get it really fluctuates depending on what the the gimmicks are because there are different gimmicks and it's all random. There are some gimmicks that are random, there is mainly just one main gimmick and then there's like sub gimmicks which is like all random. Which get annoying if you get a really bad bag of gimmicks out there. So I know some of you have seen my Muramasa stream. Relatively that stream was okay in terms of just because we use like uh, Hatcher monsters and, and basically viable monsters. But once you get into max luck range, max lucking with max luck monsters you probably need one or two continues or like uh, just to if you're running for max luck because there's probably no good max luck for that monster like a Surtur or an Izanami I guess Izanami is more better in terms of the top of the list so in my opinion for Muramasa farming so Izanami Jack and Soul Wing X Soul Wing X will be out pretty soon hopefully in terms of chronological order uh, those three are you need like a bounce and pierce monster just uh, just to let you know so the bounce monsters the really OP ones are Izanami uh, who else did I say Jack and and what's his name Soul Wing X in terms of pierce monsters I would go for Ghost Ghost is a future extreme dungeon and Ghost Ascended is probably the best one I don't think there is any more outside of that. So in terms of Pierce, Ghost is probably your OP pick. But even so, even if you have Ghost and Izanamis and all those max like you probably you won't it's not a hundred percent win. Just like how it is in in Surtur and Izanami and not like how it is in Surtur and Izanami and Dark Dungeon Farming. In the light it's the farming dungeon for Muramasa is light and the really good one is dark. And for the light farming, there's so much RNG that even the best like ghost, like two ghosts and two Izanamis might not even beat it. Might not beat it because you might get a bad, bad bag of, of uh, what you call it, 
of gimmicks which pretty much screws you over because the gimmicks are revive, uh, summon, damage walls, and ability lock. So if you get a really bad bag of like, let's say like ability lock and like, what else is there? Ability lock and who knows what else is there then it's really 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 bad and it will pretty much be death Although there are ways of avoiding it and ways of like strategizing it strategize within it with it But it's not a hundred percent win for everybody and even if you know what the gimmicks are uh, Beforehand PSG you can tell you can tell It's still not a hundred percent even if you're even if you're really good enough to uh, good enough for Murasame, so it gets really hard. But even so, like once you run with four max luck monsters for Muramasa, you'll probably stone either way, just like how you some of you did for Dark Mur Murasame. So otherwise, like hopefully, hopefully uh, Murasame comes back beforehand, and we can max luck Murasame because for the Dark Muramasa, the better ones in terms of Hatchermoss in terms of farmables is Izanami and Light Murasame and then Ghost as well so Ghost and Izanami are basically the Surtur and Izanami of Murasame but it is hard it's still hard and all that stuff so just get ready in my opinion Ghost is not that bad of a monster to max luck his dungeon is really easy I've been har I've been harping a lot of people that uh, everybody should max luck a Ghost I think his dungeon is even more easier than than Queen Butterfly, but that's if you're using Hatcher monsters and stuff like that. So might not be the same with like ma uh, with all Max Lux, but it is really easy. And yeah, and it's pretty and it's pretty like it's pretty fast as well. Like as long as you don't get caught with the reviving loop of like the boss reviving his own armor and stuff like that, his own attack monsters then it's pretty easy especially with uh hatcher monsters probably like what five six minutes per run and then if you're going max luck that might take a little bit longer especially with co-op and stuff like that so but either way it's very fast and very easy dungeon and his abilities are pretty op in terms of a farmable i think even better in my opinion than Queen Butterfly, although Queen Butterfly does have an extra no ability, is uh, which is kind of I guess better in terms of flexibility for go in terms of dungeons over Ghost. But either way, uh, I do recommend doing Ghost in terms of farming. But N it's pretty much like that. Uh, next series, uh, they did announce that Yomi is going to come out in August. As you can see, as you can see my Yomi stream that was. That was a I guess it was funny for you guys because I died a lot and <laughs> but I was stressed out I was like really stressed out like what like three hours of me like my head hurt the whole time uh, although I did clear because I did uh, use some OPs on my clears I didn't really beat it with like subpar monsters but either way I guess I hope it was informative uh, it is archived. There's a VOD of it. If you guys want to know what the dungeon looks like and what it, uh, what the good monsters are, like speed up, so speed up Snow White or Udier, and then what else is there? Uh, Roma Kushlin for my pure Snow Gravity Bear, and of course like Blade Murasame for bounce, and Insana Yukimura is really good as well. But in terms of max luck, uh, Jack, Jack and Circuit will be your OPs of that. In terms of max luck, a uh, key key. Um, some people bring key, but that's for that recommendation only for people that are really good at the dungeon. Like you cannot miss a shot, uh, even with uh, because key you're basically throwing a turn, and of course there's no hearts and you'll take damage when for key. So you're basically throwing a turn. For an extra two treasure chests so unless you know what you're doing if you can hit every single of your shots if you know how that dungeon works but you're only throwing a shot on the mini boss stages before the final boss because the final boss doesn't have no gravity barriers so you can just freely use key to move around and stuff like that but 
just getting to the mini boss will be a lot harder and it'll be not as smooth in my opinion but if you're running with four max lock monsters i don't think there is a composition with four max lock monsters that is really good unless everybody knows how to use uh, jack very well because i think jack four jacks can beat it but everybody has to be on the same page everybody knows what they have what is that they're doing and it's harder than like izanami like using four queen butterflies there's no pinching what well, technically you can match shot but you gotta you need to practice for that and it's not as easy as izanami because there's no tight you have to actually match shot from like from their weeks uh, from their weak spots not like match shotting like bouncing off top of their head or something like that there's no thing like that for yomi so unless you know how to unless everybody on your team knows how to farm knows yomi inside out it gets really hard so for max lux for skill is not really i don't think there is a team for it but that's only that's only for the average player if PS most average players can with like a queen queen butterfly my slug can do izanami as long as they know how to work the match shots but for average person like for the same person same people for yomi for yo uh, for max slugs for yomi it's going to be probably impossible for them you gotta get like really op status and even i can't do it so yeah so that's how how it is but b i guess yomi is a really good monster so be happy that she's gonna come she's a really good monster i do recommend two of them but i'll probably talk about it more when she actually gets announced uh next month they say next month and probably Uria will come during the mid next month as well during the hero series hero series that's mid month mid uh, mid august so probably mid august is Uria, and then end of the end of august is probably yomi or something like that don't i don't have any confirmation of this but just from my prediction yomi at the end of august and then udio at the mid august and then all her all her ascension materials are out there as well like medusa and jack i think i forgot all the ascension materials for her but hopefully udio comes very very soon and next month and then probably a new series beforehand i'm not sure that's just my prediction hopefully like tiger x and soul x will come out next as well because those two are after the kindred kingdom series in terms of chronological order in jp and basically i recommend for tiger x and soul x to use the x versions they're a lot better than the originals unless unless you're using tiger for izanami then i guess keep the water version of tiger but other than that then just go for the x versions but that's it for na after this bgm break is of course jp and we're back to jp and of course got a gotta talk about this is of course the street fighter collaboration and for me i did roll a view how many it took i'm not really gonna say it took a lot let's just say that i took it took a lot <laughs> to roll him and uh, i did lock 90 my e honda and i'm three away from blanca but i don't really want to roll until i get a lock 90 of blanca so uh i'm gonna keep blanca at lock 60 and then and then keep it that way but it, i did roll a lot just saying so it's not hard it's not really easy to actually get a ryu and of course i didn't get a shinli or a uh, guile either but in terms of the monsters themselves ryu of, is of course the op monster of that hatcher just because the evolve has double null uh, abilities with gravity barrier and damage wall which is basically the two main ones either way of course in the future even now in jp there are dungeons with just mine mines and warps out there as well so He's not like a catch-all Ryu, he's not like a catch-all monster. He is a really good monster, but there are some knocks to him, especially with the bump combo, his Hadouken. Bump combo is not crazy strong. Um, it's not really as good as like a laser or a laser type, well, like a one-way laser type or a lock-on one-way laser type, but it is okay. It is a single target, a uh, single target with a lot of, uh, that does a lot, about 100,000, over 100,000. 
and you can shoot from anywhere but it is the closest enemy so it might hit drones and shields and that's not good as well but i guess that's a basically it's only knock in terms of ryu uh, his strike shot's really good like 16 turn for a 1.5 million strike shot to the boss is like crazy uh if you want to compare i don't know if you can compare it to any good monsters out there but like apollo x doesn't barely beats 1k with hers uh valkyrie barely beats 1k with hers so she is uh ryu is really really good in terms of strike shot and if you're and if you're close enough to your allies then of course you can let out bomb combos and he also moves upwards so if your monster if ryu bashes bashes the monster and then he and then one of your allies is above him like just barely barely touching the monster then when he moves up you'll proc his bump combo which is a lot better than the other bash ones because they have to be like really basically where ryu hits uh where the monster hits the boss so you get some uh, chance of actually proccing other bump combos which is really really nice just to add in a little bit of extra damage and then ascendant form ascendant form 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 but ascendant form at evil ryu is i think one of the best no gravity barrier monsters out there like no gravity barrier only monsters uh, there are some monsters that have like no gravity barrier with like clear other things like other abilities but like just no gravity barrier himself i think he's one of the best monsters out there beats out harley x in my opinion opinion uh they do have really powerful strike shots and where ryu has lower hp and like crazy attack and power attack and speed and harley x has lower speed but like high high hp and high attack it's harder to hit for a harley x's strike shot and of course she has lower speed so you can't really use her strike shot turn reduction as effectively but uh you, it is very situate it's more situational for harley x's strike shot than than Ryu's strike shot but either like even so you can probably use harley x's strike shot to mob clear you can probably just bounce bounce uh, into enemies and and clear them whereas ryu just one shots like can one shot a boss bar probably not the last one but it does relatively good damage it does over 2 million on a light monster it can probably do more uh once you if you can proc the bump combos and stuff like that and in terms of the shoryuken strike shot uh, what i found when like running with views and like and running him for himself is that it's basically two basically two two hits that has like a really that has like a lot of damage so one is the actual contact where you actually contact the boss if you miss if you miss the weak spot then of course it doesn't do damage but even if you barely hits it barely like just miss it a little bit the second hit which is the show you can the actual like uh, uppercut if it hits the weak spot it does it does damage as well so if you miss one part but hit the other part in terms of weak spots then you probably hit 1 million but if you hit both of them it'll go to like 1.5 to like 2 million depending on the depending on if it's evolved or ascended so it gives you some flexibility to actually do great uh, to actually deal some damage but if you miss both of them uh, if you miss both shots on the weak spot then of course it won't do that much but if you hit both it'll do a crazy lot and for 16 turns on evolved ryu and 21 turns with a strike shot cooldown on evil ryu uh, it is pretty op uh, for evil you can probably do it in in about what four uh four rounds probably not four rounds like three rounds because because you do four every single turn well, actually like five rounds actually technically but better than uh ryu which you take what four rounds well i can't really count so 16 turns for ryu so that's four rounds whereas whereas uh normal uh, evil ryu is you get four turns per his shot and then three turns after so that's seven per round that's three rounds so so really good if you can uh if you can actually hit all all the monsters but with his high speed and high attack 
high speed, then you can probably hit all three. It's just a matter of deciding if you want to do it, uh, hit all your enemies, or go for the boss with his high attack and stuff like that. But in terms of the dungeons for the Street Fighter collaboration, uh, Saget is relatively okay. Uh, of course, you can bring all the Hatcher, Hatcher monsters you want because he only is 100% drop on when you defeat the boss. There's no, uh, you don't, he doesn't drop in the speed. Speed bonus, clear bonus, no continue bonus, and luck bonuses. So he does drop on damage chest, damage chest. So people in JP bring Ibaraki Doji uh, for the homing piercer or Dark Muramasa for the elemental homings. So most people farm even even extreme for that dungeon because you can probably stack four Ibaraki Dojis and then they'll basically just bump into each other and then you'll probably beat second. And even if you or low on the HP, Ibaraki Doji can heal herself with her strike shot. So if you're getting into trouble with that, then you can just strike shot and then heal up and then and you're back back in the game. In terms of Vega, uh, not Vega, uh, M Bison, uh, it's really confusing when I was looking up names and stuff like that because I don't really play Street Fighter that much. I play like when I was really little when I don't really remember anything like what grade one or grade two or something like that. Like that. I don't really remember uh, their actual names except for like Ryu, Ken, and Chun-Li and I don't really know Guile that much either back then so so uh, M. Bison for him is basically beating two bosses uh, at once because the minions uh, well the main mini boss minion has like tons of HP basically as much as the boss himself so it's, you're basically killing two bosses at once which uh, which I kind of recommend having low strike shot cooldown monsters like Ryu is really good because it's 16 turns and you'll probably hit Hit it twice per like during the boss bait boss stages Evil Ryu is good as well because you can strike shot cooldown Harley X is good because you can strike shot cooldown as well uh, Dark Murasame can one shot uh, one of the minions at least or and then stuff like that so it's basically beating two monsters at once and with uh, M. Bison's having that uh, Psycho Crusher on the 11 turn cooldown, which can kind of one shot you if you're in the bad, worst position. Uh, he does, it is fixed in terms of where he goes. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. If you have, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then good job, you haven't died yet. But um, it's, it's fixed, so as long as you don't get into the range of that, Although it's really large, uh, really big, as long as you don't get into range of that, you'll probably be okay. Uh, if all four of you gets hit within, uh, for that, then it's probably one shot kill. I haven't experienced it yet, so I'm good so far. I'm good so far. And yeah, basically it. But uh, Saget, of course, Daigo Ten and Lucifer are basically all you need. Uh, Ryu is not that bad as well, but um, most people look for Lucifer and the female Lucifer and and Daigo Kuten for that dungeon. Some people might bring Oyo just to break the drone, the only drone on the second bar, but he's, she's not that crazy useful. But in terms of my own team when I solo, I ha I bring Daigo Kuten, uh, Udine, Udine, and Dark Muramasa, and then uh, Lucifer as a friend just to solo if, you're, if I'm like solo farming. I basically haven't lost with that team yet. Uh, one main reason is uh, why I brought Udin is because of her strike shot, her immune strike shot. I just pop it whenever it's up or when I'm actually in trouble. And I can hit all three and then hit all three monsters because she is a pierce monster. And they don't take any damage, especially when when uh, he goes with a really OP like Tiger Ken attack. Which does like what, 25k to one monster. And of course, the gunman of that dungeon does a lot as well. Uh, multiple gunmen, uh, 6k per hit. So, and since there are a lot of them, uh, you take a lot of damage. And of course, Unian can immune all of that in for a few turns. Even so, even if it's for a few turns, it's more than enough. Because you do have DPS from Daigo Ten and, and Lucifer as well, and Muramasa as well. And they do have relatively low strike shots cooldowns. Highest is I think Daigo Ten or Lucifer with 24, but even so, it's not that crazy hard. Uh, just because it's it's easier than Eva 13 for sure. Uh, just because uh, it does 
it is more mine. That's why I kind of max lux Saget, or trying to max lux Saget. I don't know, like, probably when you hear this, I might have max lux him already. He's not a bad monster, but he's not a crazy good monster. Uh, I think Eva 13 is a lot is better than him just because he's more flexible because he does have the no warp and his stretch out damage difference is not that big either because they basically hit like what a million depending on the monster but uh but uh which call it Eva 13 has the better bomb combo I guess and really depends on how you position the uh, special destruction from Sagitt but uh, Sagitt does have higher stats, uh, he has more HP, which when I find using EVA 13, I kind of lack. Especially when I'm running EVA 13 and and low lady in terms of in no warp dungeons, I find I have a lot of, I don't have enough, enough HP to actually tank shots, which kind of is meh, but but it's still good. I think I think even their thing's still better, but his dungeon is a lot harder. For beginners, I guess not that bad in terms of a first first max luck. But you might want to transition out out to after you get him, you want to expand your box in terms of other max luck monsters. Dungeons he's really good at. He's of course good at uh, M Bison, but you won't be max lucking M Bison when you're max lucking Saget. So. But and M Bison's not that great of a monster. He has a no warp and demi hume slayer, which is good for Kushinada, but his strike shot's not that crazy good. Especially for uh, if you read my blog post. Uh, there are a lot of uh Aetherion and Demi Hume monsters uh, bosses, but that have no warps. But there are gravity bears or damage walls which can pretty much hinder your strike shot, which is turning to a pierce monster, and although his Homing Piercer is good for mob clearing, but that's basically the only thing going for him. And he is a good monster to have, but I wouldn't recommend like max lucking for him unless you want like a Fenrir and Visron, Visron um max luck. But Fenrir and Visron are not really that high on the max luck list anymore in JP, although they're really good. Uh, Fenrir has two no abilities, but a lot of people just go for other monsters now. They go for more niche niche monsters, I guess, because uh, JP does have a system of having the best max luck monster for that dungeon, and Fenrir fits into a lot of them uh, in terms of just being the dungeon. But they're not, but he's not really top tier in those dungeons. So I don't really suggest if you're going for JP max luck, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go for Fenrir if you're trying to get into like other people's games in randoms and stuff like that because they don't really like. Uh, Fenrir in terms of a max luck monster or getting or using them but I guess Fenrir is good for Yeti I think that's the only one that he's really good at other than that then I don't really recommend him in terms of max luck if you're going with like random people because random people don't really like Fenrir for some reason uh, but even so like in the future there's like Takayasha Ime and Ghost and Louis the 13 which are really really good monsters in general and very easy dungeons in my opinion Louis the 13 might be a little bit hard. That's where you need Senjiao. Senjiao is where you go for Louis the 13, but that's the only, mo probably the only dungeon that Senjiao is really good at. But even so, uh, and another thing, Goki, uh, Akuma. Uh, Goki is the JP name, uh, Akuma. In terms of his uses, uh, I've seen the JP devs doing a Basilisk for him. Um, I don't really recommend Basilisk. Uh, just because there are mines and poison is really crazy. Although he has high HP in my opinion, but um, there are damage walls and and mines out there. You probably he's probably gonna get carried more than anything. He won't be really like doing much. And his strike shot for Basculus is about two million on the weak spot, but that's on top of fire, the elemental weakness, and and the slayer, which is two times so. Basically, if you don't use it for the Slayer, that's 1 million. And then if it's a wood mon if it's not a wood monster, then it's probably like 700 to 800k. So, and for pretty much the same cooldown as we use Strike Shop, because it's kind of like the same. It's not that crazy good. And his other Slayer is Beast, which there are not many good Beast monsters out there. Uh, Beast, like, there's probably like zero Beast drops except for like 
one, but that's only the mini boss. <laughs> Except for one, but that's the mini boss. Uh, there's no extreme boss that has beasts, that are beasts, I think. If there is, then correct me. Uh, either way, uh, if that if it if there is one, then probably he that monster is really not that useful for me to actually remember. And then dragon uh, only basilisk. There are like typh uh, typhoon, and there are some like fireworms and stuff like that. But either way, uh, I guess it's good for beginners to grab like a fireworm or a dark worm or a typhoon. I guess I guess that was their plan when they're making Akuma. And then Hakua, uh, Akuma versus Hakua. I don't recommend Akuma against Hakua. Uh, although he does slay her, uh, he is really really slow for being a power type, and you need a uh, wave clear and you need mob clear and you need a uh, speed up and you need high speed for that dungeon so i wouldn't recommend i would rather recommend evolve hercules or evolve not evolve ascended hercules and evolve kenshin in that dungeon than than akuma so that's basically it for the street fighter in terms of future uh there is a monster strike anime that's coming up uh they're having a press conference really soon uh, probably once you listen to this podcast, the press conference is over and you'll probably read news about it. I'll probably be posting up some uh, stuff as well uh, pertaining to that. And hopefully it turns out well. It's coming in the fall. Uh, I don't know when anime starts in the fall, I guess uh, September or November or October. I don't, rem I don't remember the actual season breaks or when an actual season starts in terms of anime, so... Because I don't really watch anime in general. So it's coming in the fall. And then hopefully when you after you hear this podcast, you'll go and uh, go find the anime trailer which they're gonna show in that press conference. And then they're are making a 3DS game that's coming within uh, 2015. Hopefully it becomes really good. Hopefully there's like some Nintendo collaboration or something. And then of course, Monster Festival, which is on August the 5th. Uh, if you're lucky and you are in Japan or you're going to Japan during that time, then for sure, go for it. Uh, go to it. It is free for admission. And they do give out one orb and five redesigned monsters. Five redesigned monsters for your game on the JP version, of course, not the NA version. And what those five monsters are is Surtir, Queen Butterfly, Tokuga Yoshinobu, Nero, and Dark Worm. So you get... One orb and five of those monsters uh, for your box. Whether they are good or not, uh, it really depends. They don't release the stats out for it. It might not be the same as the originals, but uh, it is free and it, it comes out as six stars. So you don't have to evolve. You don't have to do anything. Although you might have to level it up. I don't know if they were going to give it out in like uh, max level form. And of course their abilities might be totally different from the originals. But even so, really good, nice monsters to have as a trophy to show that you actually went to the dungeon and went to the festival and do all the cool stuff. And a lot of things that are coming up in JP, um, they are going to have like a 24 hour marathon uh, with Max Murai, which is who is a YouTuber, a Monster Strike YouTuber, uh, not really Monster Strike only, but like he does games and stuff. And Monster Strike is one of his main, uh, main games. And... They're going to do a 24 hour uh, marathon so and then there's like some talk where they're they might do like a 24 hour uh, uh in terms of uh extreme dungeons not like one dungeon for 24 hours but like one extreme dungeon per hour or maybe like with some impossibles in between but like i guess like 24 extreme slash impossible dungeons for that stream for that day and then uh you'll see max Murat and his and and like the JP devs together farm and uh, just running those dungeons all all the time and hopefully I'll put up some links and hopefully you guys can see it uh, it is 24 hours so it doesn't really matter of the time zone you can probably just wake up or after work or or during school I guess question mark <laughs> uh, quotations question mark whatever all those things and you can watch them playing monster strike uh, just having fun and stuff like that. So really, really cool. And then of course, Monster Strike uh, Festival on the on August the second. They're probably they're probably hiding a lot of news just for that uh, just for that 
uh, event so be uh hope that something cool comes out uh, there are rumors of a restricted dungeon restricted dungeon depending on play stats uh they are trying to they are trying to uh what you call it they're trying to reward players that play longer in monster strike uh, i guess that's their way of uh combating against re-rolling because uh a lot of people are re uh, have re-rolled for lucifer and they're they basically combat it in terms of striker bonus reset which is after your 365th day of login total login it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be consecutive and you get your second round of striker bonuses which is another 100 orbs so meet 100 friends get one orb for each and then you get another 100 orbs to roll and then there are missions where you play stats play stats where every like thousand games you joined or played you get an orb and stuff and then of course weekly missions if you're a higher rank you get uh you get harder missions but uh, you get harder missions but the rewards are really rewarding rewarding with like max p's and and stuff like that you get i think the highest tier which i am right now i think you have to be at least like 150 um you get max p's as the rewards whereas all the other lower tiers you only get you only get like uh duplies or even lower or even lower stuff like that so really good uh, the missions are not that hard it might be a little bit time consuming or stamina consuming as uh, some of you uh for me it was 12 extremes 12 extremes 10 temple of heroes and five turtle quests uh temple of heroes you can just do any dungeon any level so like you can do the 50 stem and then when you go to sleep you can just uh uh waste your stamina on the 15 stem and then it goes it goes your counter up extreme might be a little bit hard although it is only 12 you can probably if you and it's for a week like one week so as long as you play the game uh it shouldn't be that bad i don't think impossibles count for extremes so Depending if you really want to actually play the extreme or not, it might uh, differ for you. But I think it's okay as long as you just play the dungeon. I just play the dungeon for fun. I don't really play the dungeon because I want to max luck or getting ascend materials. I just play whenever I have stamina or when I'm not busy. <laughs> uh, quote unquote my recent events. But um, but yeah, I usually like when I play extreme dungeons. I usually play with as many different monsters as possible. I don't just play because I can win them. I like playing with like other monsters and stuff like that. That's why I do multiple uh, videos for one dungeon uh, from time to time, just to show that different monsters can work on uh, the same dungeons uh, as well. So that's basically it for my podcast. I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys next week and. Hopefully, I'll do it on a weekly basis from now on. Uh, I wouldn't, no promises. I might be busy again. Uh, this week, I might be a little bit busy uh, for some stuff. But uh, in terms of Monster Strike related, you'll probably see in the future. But um, hopefully, I'll do it on a weekly basis. And hopefully, I'll do more streams. I am planning to do once a, once a week. Once a week, either NA or JP. I won't do like once a week per both versions. Just because I am, uh, I usually host everything. So if I'm playing with everybody, then I'm basically hosting for like a two hour, three hour session. And that requires orbs and that requires me either buying them or saving orbs in general. So I won't be really doing on like a daily basis or even on a weekly basis for both versions. So, uh, so be careful of that. Uh, if you want to donate, then donate. Uh, it might help me. Uh, it helps me keep on keep this thing going just in terms of hosting for you guys for those streams or or just giving me the time or like the leeway to show you more monsters and to roll and stuff like that. So if you support me, then support me there. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to donate anything, but I am putting ads just so that as long as you watch, you kind of supporting me in a way anyways. But just watch my videos. Uh, that's more than enough support for me. Uh, just seeing that view counter go up uh, really helps me. Uh, gives me motivation. And looking at my blog, I saw like almost 9,000 people viewed my blog. Although it's not like 9,000 different people. But uh, 
people uh, looking at my blog just for information and in itself is more than enough for me in terms of motivation to actually keep on doing this. And of course, doing strike shot as well gives me the motivation because I know a lot of people go to that site for information. And of course, seeing my work there is more than enough and it's a great honor as well. So I hope you guys uh, like this and I'll see you guys next time. No promises that it's going to be next week, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.